representation of colors. Ladies and gentlemen, the Provost of Virginia Commonwealth University, Dr. Gail Hackett. Good morning. Please be seated. Wow. Welcome to Virginia Commonwealth University's May Commencement Ceremony. Today, we gather for the honor of celebrating the accomplishments of VCU's Class of 2017. My name is Gail Hackett, and I'm the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. On behalf of President Michael Rao, the Board of Visitors, and our faculty and staff. It is a pleasure to welcome you to this morning's commencement ceremony. I'm pleased to recognize our VCU Police Honor Guard, our soloist, Victoria Jackson, and the VCU, and the VCU Commencement Band, conducted by Terry Austin. Let me begin by introducing those who share the platform with me today. I will ask the members of the platform party to rise as you are recognized and please remain standing. Please kindly hold your applause until the end of the introductions. Seated here in the front row, Rector of the VCU Board of Visitors, John Luke Jr., Vice Rector Phoebe Hall, and other members of the Board of Visitors. Also, our VCU alumni president, Jim Williams. Seated behind me, our university vice presidents. Seated behind me to my right, faculty senate president, Holly Alford, and student government association presidents, Connor Jarrett and Katie Clark. Also seated behind me, Akel Kahara, dean for the School of the Arts in Qatar. Our deans representing each of the schools and Colleges with graduates today are also here on the platform. On each side of the stage are our Grand Marshals McKenna Brown and Ellen Byrne. Other members of the platform party who were not recognized at this time will be recognized during the program. I'm also pleased to acknowledge and extend a warm welcome to students and guests from VCU's campus in Doha, Qatar, who are seated in the President's block box. 
please join me in recognizing this wonderful group of people. In various locations around the arena are members of our outstanding and committed faculty, including several Emeriti faculty members who have joined us today. Would all faculty please rise and stand so that we may congratulate and thank you for the integral role you played in transforming the lives of all of our graduates. Let's also take a moment to thank the many families and friends who have supported our graduates through the years. Would the parents of our graduates please rise and be recognized? Would the spouses and partners of our graduates please rise and be recognized? Would the significant others, children, friends, and the rest of the families of our graduates please rise and be recognized? Now, it is my pleasure to welcome to the podium the President of Virginia Commonwealth University, Dr. Michael Rao. Good morning. Oh, it's great to be here. So great to be here. Provost Hackett, thank you very, very much for that introduction of all of us. You're so gracious. And I also want to thank you for your incredible leadership at Virginia Commonwealth University. You know, it's days like this when we get a chance to really celebrate the success of our graduates who will go out and shape society in so many different ways. Um, it's wonderful to take a moment to highlight the extraordinary learning experience that you and our other faculty colleagues make possible for all of our students and frankly for so much of our community. So just one more time, I want you to take a moment to thank the Chief Academic Officer of the University, Gail Hackett. And to our graduates and all of your families, I offer absolutely heartfelt congratulations. So today, you'll graduate from one of America's premier research universities. And by the way, you have made this one of the pr most premier research universities. But you're doing this challenged and changed by your great experiences here. And you know, the greatest part of this education that you've had is that you will continue to be challenged and changed forever. You're going to continue to learn, you'll keep thinking, you'll keep progressing, and you'll keep changing your mind. And you know what? I want you to know that that's a really good thing because as George Bernard Shaw told us, and I'm going to quote him directly, progress is impossible without change, and those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. We're counting on all of you as a new generation of great leaders to change a world that needs you. And that begins with changing how you see the world. Now, I've got to say that there is this perception out there, and every one of us know this, that changing your mind is somehow a very bad thing. There is strength, of course, in persistence and not wavering at all. We just revere people who are obstinate in the face of opposition, who cling to a belief that they've so long held. And those, we think, of course, who change their minds might be unreliable. They're careless. They're indeterminate. Well, the truth is that this is more than just a perception. There's actually some science behind it, and I want to tell you a little bit about it. So a few years ago, there were some researchers who put people in an MRI machine. This is a, a, a magnet that basically determines activity. And it, they presented them with some evidence that they believed passionately that something may actually be untrue. 
the MRI showed that their brains just reacted in the very same way that they do when they respond to a physical threat. And as one of the researchers had said, it was kind of the same brain activity that you would see if you were walking through a forest and suddenly see this bear. So here's the problem with that. When we ignore a new truth, when we refuse even to consider the legitimacy of something that we might disagree with, it really limits our ability to experience new things. And that's going to hold back humanity because it will block our beliefs about what might be possible for any one of us to achieve. So, as lifelong learners who now have been shaped by your VCU education and all the great learning experiences that you've had, I want to ask you something. What are you going to do when you learn something new? Well, I know that you've got the courage to change your mind, to be self-aware enough, to be brave enough to evolve. Changing our minds means that we have learned something new. And that's something we've got to seek out. Unless we do, we can never progress beyond where we are today. Isn't that sad? So changing your mind, I'm telling you, is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign that you know more than you used to know. Malcolm Gladwell, the great writer and modern day philosopher, called changing your mind, and I need to quote him directly and make sure I get this right, your responsibility as a person to constantly be updating your positions on as many things as possible. And if you don't contradict yourself on a regular basis, then, he says, you're not thinking. So, I ask you, as great leaders, as graduates of Virginia Commonwealth University, to go out there Keep thinking, keep evolving, and keep learning. That's how we're all going to progress together under your great leadership in a world that absolutely positively needs you in the great minds that every one of you have. We are depending on you. So with that, I offer you the heartiest congratulations on behalf of Virginia Commonwealth University. You're going to be grand successes, and we know it. We need you. Congratulations. So now I'm very pleased and honored to have this opportunity to introduce someone who has helped to change Virginia in so many great ways. And he's changed the lives of millions of Virginians in the process. At various times in his life, Tim Kaine has been an iron worker, a missionary, a civil rights attorney, an educator, a musician, and of course, as most of us know, a public servant. He's actually only one of 30 people in American history that have been a mayor, a governor, and a U.S. senator. And by the way, he's also been a city council member here in Richmond, and he was also our state's lieutenant governor. In each one of these roles, Tim Kaine has been a champion of diversity, but also of inclusion. He stood strong. For that, he stood strong in support of our veterans. He stood strong in support of diplomacy, health care, and education. He serves on the Senate's committees on armed services, budget, foreign relations and health, education, labor, and pensions, He's a ranking member, actually, of the Armed Services Readiness Subcommittee and the Foreign Relations Subcommittee on Near East, South Asia, Central Asia, and Counterterrorism. Senator Kane rose to national prominence, you probably all remember, in 2016 as the Democratic vice presidential nominee, and he's continued to be a strong voice in national politics and policy. But he is first and foremost, I'm proud to say, a Richmonder. He and his wife, Ann Holton, have lived in the same Northside Richmond neighborhood for more than 30 years. And I'm grateful that he has always been a fervent and ardent supporter of Virginia Commonwealth University. So I ask you at this time to please join me in welcoming back to VCU our senator, our U.S. senator and keynote speaker today, Tim Kaine.
Hey, thanks so much. And good morning. Thank you. Thank you so much, please. What a tremendous honor to be back to speak to you graduates and to be here with so many friends. I try always to accept graduation invitations or invitations from staff and former staff to officiate at their weddings. I, I did my 14th wedding last weekend and here I am with you to do today on graduation day. And the reason I always say yes, if I can, to wedding, officiating, and graduation speeches is not every day do you get the honor of being with someone in a day that will be one of the best days of their lives. And a graduation day is going to be one of the best days of your life. And to have the honor to share it with you is something that I deeply appreciate. I'm really glad to be here at VCU. I, I thank President Rao for his leadership and his kind invitation to come and be with you. So many of the board members and faculty members here are friends. I'm not a VCU alum. I, I did go to a school where black and gold were the color, M-I-Z-Z-O-U, but I'm not a VCU alum. Wow, okay, okay. But all three of my kids were born at VCU. And I've had multiple emergency room visits to VCU as well with three kids. I represented VCU as a city councilman. I've worked as a councilman and mayor and governor on the foundation of the VCU Engineering School, the formation of the Biotech Research Park that VCU wisely started 20 years ago, the expansion of the hospital and the medical school, I have been on the campus a million times to enjoy myself at theater and musical presentations, to talk to student groups, to meet with President Rao and others about issues in common. I feel very, very close to this community. I'm proud of VCU. I'm proud of its contribution to our city and state and nation, and I'm proud of the leadership that has been shown at this institution during the 33 years I've lived in Richmond. Thanks for the opportunity. Now, I accept graduation speeches, but graduation speeches are notoriously difficult. No one is interested in what a graduation speaker has to say. It is impossible to be memorable when you're thinking about the emotions of the moment and the party that you're gonna have afterwards. I, I, I attended three graduations of my own, high school, college, law school. The most memorable was my high school graduation I remember nothing of what the speaker said, and I was the speaker at my high school graduation. <laughs> I only remember two things about the most memorable graduation I attended, my high school graduation, and both happened in the hall after the graduation. I walked out in the hall after the recessional, and the girl who had dumped me right before senior prom came over to me and gave me a kiss. I remember that like it was five minutes ago. <laughs> and while I bring that up, if when you recess out, you are at odds with anybody in your graduating class or a professor, and things aren't completely square between you, and you go up to them and give them a hug or shake their hands or give them a kiss, I haven't seen Trish since that moment. That was 40 years ago, and I remember it like it was yesterday. So if you're at odds with anybody, right after this recession would be a good time to just go over and wish him well, especially since you may not have to see him ever again. <laughs> Second thing that happened right after that was I was looking for my mom and dad and my two brothers. And my parents walked up to me. I, I am so embarrassed to say this to you. I was 18 years old and I thought I was cool. So when my parents came up to me at this memorable graduation, I shook my dad's hand and I shook my mother's hand. I looked next to me and the all-state center on our football team was giving his parents a big hug. And I remember thinking, why can't I be like that? Why can't I really show my parents that I'm not just a cool guy but how much I really appreciate them. So the second thing I hope you'll do, and I'm sure you will when this is over, especially on Mother's Day weekend, is when you see your families and friends after this, 
you really let them know and don't hold anything back how much they've meant to you and how much you appreciate them for getting you to this day. So, so having given you two pieces of advice, of advice about the hour after graduation, let me give you one piece of advice about life. Let me tell you a story that I've really been thinking about the last few years, especially the last few months, and just use it as a piece of advice. I was elected to the Senate in January of 2013, and when you come to the Senate, there's sort of an interesting hazing ritual. They, they put you in a basement office that's windowless for about six months until you get a real office. I was in a tiny temporary office in the basement of the Dirksen building, and there were 20 of us in four very small offices that were connected. It was a, it was a perfect breeding ground for every flu, cough, and strep throat for about six months. Right outside my office was the front desk where constituent phone calls were coming in. And one day, I heard Liza, who was a very talented young staffer, who was answering the phone, take one call after the next. I was hearing her outside my open door. And I could only hear what she was saying, but it sounded as, as if she was having a rough day on the phone and she was doing her best to calm one person down after the next. At the end of the day, I went out to Liza and I said, wow, that sounded tough. Tell me about it. Tell me what's going on on the phones today. And Liza said this, all day long I've been answering the phone and people start off the call, they start off the call yelling at me. And I said, wow, that's, that's kinda, that kind of surprises me. But then she said, but here's the funny thing. I asked them a few questions about why they're calling and within about 45 seconds, they calm down and they become absolutely as polite as they can be. Now that struck me as weird too, so I said, well, why, if they become polite so fast, why are they yelling at you as soon as you pick up the phone? And Liza gave me an answer that was a real aha moment for me, and I've been thinking about it a lot. Liza said, when they call, they don't think I'm gonna listen to them unless they yell. It's like they expect not to be listened to and when I actually take them seriously, they're surprised and immediately grateful. It's like they expect not to be listened to, and when I actually take them seriously, they're surprised and grateful. That was about four years ago, but I think about it all the time. And as I talk to my other staffers in my six offices around the state who answer the phone all day, they basically tell me the same thing that Liza did. People are expecting that you won't really listen to them. They've had that experience in the past and they think they're gonna have it again. And when you do, even if you can't you know, solve their problem immediately, they actually become surprised and grateful. Of course, this is a lesson about politics, but not just about politics. People don't feel like Washington or their state capital or their city hall really understand what they're going through. So those of us who work in politics, we have to acknowledge that, and we have to look for intentional ways to interact with people and do a better job of showing them that we're listening to them. And within politics, as we work with each other, legislators or others, we've got to do a better job of listening to each other. Bill Clinton once said about being president and having hundreds of thousands of federal employees. It's like being a cemetery director. Lots of people under you, but none of them listening to you. But the insight that people don't feel listened to is not just about politics. We live in a society where there's a lot of talking and not much listening. It sometimes seems like everybody's doing a monologue and there's not much real dialogue going on. Turn on TV and watch talking heads debate. They're not really listening to each other. They're trying to get their points in. <clears throat> Read people's online comments on your favorite website or blog. Watch passers-by on the street. Or think about how often you check your emails and texts when you are with and supposed to be listening to families and friends. We have all kinds of ways to express ourselves, but really being present in the moment with somebody and really listening to them is uncommon. <clears throat> Ernest Hemingway noticed this. He said, 
I like to listen. I've learned a great deal from listening. Most people never listen. Or we listen to the things that we like and tune out the things that we don't. Simon and Garfunkel said, a man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rest. Liza's insight, she was about 24 years old, you know, she was a brand new staffer, but that insight has really been a motivator for me. I, I am not as good a listener as I can be, and sometimes you listen worse to the people closest to you, like family and staff and friends. But because of what Liza said to me, I try to really force myself to listen to people, to tune out distractions, to hear what they're telling me, and then let it sink in for a while and think about it. And yes, Mike even changed my mind sometimes based on what I've heard. When I was governor, I want to honor somebody today. The most powerful legislator was uh, a state representative delegate named Bill Howell, the Republican Speaker of the House from Stafford County. He's retiring at the end of this year after a very long and very successful political career. We disagreed on virtually everything maybe 80%, maybe 80% of the time. And that was from the first day I was in office till the end. And the disagreements frustrated me because they blocked him from getting some things done that he wanted done and they frustrated him <clears throat> for the same reason. But we liked each other. And even through disagreement, we talked to each other. And through talking, we learned about some points where we actually agreed that we wouldn't have realized had we not kept talking. We found out that we both love open space and so we worked together to preserve open space, especially Civil War and Revolutionary battlefields in Virginia. We found that we both wanted to ban smoking in restaurants, and so we worked together across party lines to ban smoking in restaurants and bars. Even if we disagreed 80% of the time, and let me be honest, if Bill Howell were here, he would say 90% of the time, we found areas where we could make progress because we never stopped communicating and listening to each other. My relationship with Bill taught me something, a theory of life, the Venn diagram theory. So everybody knows Venn diagrams for math classes. You know, you got a circle, this is you, the other person's circle is here. There are areas where you don't overlap, where you're not going to agree, where you're not going to find common cause, but there's an overlap in a Venn diagram. In life, whether you're talking to a voter, whether you're talking to a legislative colleague, whether you're talking to somebody you work with, or a family member, or a neighbor, what you should try to do is find that overlap. That's what you should try to do, and if you try to do it, you'll be able to find an overlap. Just last week in the Senate, I was working with a Republican colleague over a very tough and challenging bill that we're writing together, and we had come to a, a log jam on two really critical issues. Our staffs had done a good job of solving all the other challenges, but they couldn't solve these two, and they seemed like big points of disagreement. So my colleague and I sat down to hash it out. And it turns out there wasn't a disagreement at all. We actually were on the same page. We had a different understanding of what some of the words meant in the deal. He thought they meant this, and I thought they meant that. We agreed on the substance, and so what we found by listening to each other is we actually didn't disagree at all we agreed, but we just need to do a better job of explaining what it is that we intended to do. Of course, there's so many issues that are controversial in politics right now. One last story that's about listening and not really about politics. I took the floor this week to give a big floor speech on the most controversial domestic issue right now, which is the future of our health care system. I'm, the, I'm on the health committee in the Senate. And uh, it turns out that I went up to give the speech, I didn't realize, but a Republican colleague, who's a physician, was making a speech right before me on the same topic. And I'm sure he was there to state his piece, and then I'm there to state my piece. But as he was speaking, I found myself like, well, I agree with that. I agree with that. I agree with that. I heard a few points where I didn't agree, but I heard many points I agreed with. And then when I started to speak, he stayed and listened to my speech. And then he and I went up and talked to each other when I was done. <clears throat> and I walked away from that thinking, as hard as this issue is, is it all about policy? Or do we maybe have a listening problem here? We haven't listened enough to patients. We haven't listened enough to doctors. We haven't listened enough to businesses that are trying to buy health insurance for employees. We haven't listened enough to each other. It's fine to have your own point of view. But 
maybe it's more of a listening problem than a public policy problem. Let me tell you one last story and then conclude. And this is a story from my time on the campaign trail in 2016. As a nominee for vice president, I, I was a you know, pretty boring guy, but I did bring one unusual thing to the ticket. I'm fluent in Spanish. And I was the first member of a national ticket that could actually campaign in Spanish. And I did it a lot on TV, radio, newspaper, and speeches. And when I would do an interview or a speech in Spanish afterwards, invariably, the interviewer or host would say, there's never been anybody on a ticket who could do that before. But once an interviewer said it a little bit differently, and it gave me a real insight, we've never had anybody on a ticket who could listen to us in our own language. And I realized there, it wasn't my ability to speak Spanish, because I can assure you, I'm no Cervantes. I sound like a, an Irish Catholic dude speaking Spanish, right? It wasn't my ability to speak Spanish that meant anything to anybody. It was my ability to listen to people in Spanish, to listen to them speaking in the language where they felt the most comfortable. People want to feel listened to. So there's many elements that will help you succeed in life, but in a hyper-connected world where most of the good things that need doing take a team to be successful, I'll just tell you a key for your success will be to be as good a listener as you can be. Focus on what people are really saying, undistracted by your electronics or your own impatience to jump in and say what you think. Let your listening widen your horizons and challenge your assumptions and yes, even lead you to change your mind. People will really notice this. One of the most important things you can communicate to anybody is that you respect them. And if you want to communicate to somebody that you respect them, I would argue it's less about anything you say than about the degree of care that you bring to your effort to listen to them. All right, I've made you listen to me enough. I congratulate all of you VCU graduates, and not to put too much pressure on, but we're expecting a lot of great things from you. Thanks so much, it's good to be with you. Senator Kane. <laughs> Senator Kane, thank you so much for that great message, a great message from our U.S. Senator. Um, and I want you to know that while you were speaking, in addition to the back of your head, I was also watching our graduates. And I want you to know that they were all listening. They really were, and um, for good reason. And uh, I also want you to know that as I was looking out at the crowd, um, our graduates specifically, I realized how many of you I know and how many of you I admire. And one of the things I admire you so much for, and I want Senator Kane to hear this because as one of America's leaders, I think you should, um, I'm incredibly proud of you for how kind and loving all of you are toward each other. This is a group of people who I know well, and I have watched you over the years, and um, you're going to do great things in this world. So, Senator Kane, again, thank you very much. We're so proud and honored to have you with us today. So, every year, we offer special recognition to people whose careers and values have enhanced Virginia Commonwealth University, but also the quality of life within our communities throughout Virginia, and around the world. So today we're going to begin with the presentation of the Edward Wayne Medal. This is a medal that honors individuals who have made outstanding contributions and who have provided exemplary service to VCU. The medal, by the way, is named in honor of the university's first vice rector and one of our state's great leaders. This year, the Edward A. Wayne Medal goes to Pam and Bill Royal. So at this time, I will ask Rector Luke if he will kindly escort the Royals forward here to the podium.
Pamela Kay and William A. Royal Jr. Your extraordinary philanthropy and exceptional service have made a meaningful and lasting impact at Virginia Commonwealth University. Your remarkable generosity and volunteer leadership will continue to enrich the lives of our students, patients, faculty, and researchers, and will positively shape Richmond business, art, and culture for years to come. In particular, your service as campaign co-chairs for the Institute of Contemporary Art at VCU has set a clear example and embodies a sense of vision and leadership worth emulating. Your investment of time and resources to a variety of VCU programs and initiatives have helped propel VCU to new heights. President Rao. Pam and Bill Royal, in recognition of your truly tremendous generosity and support by the authority vested in me by the Board of Visitors of Virginia Commonwealth University, it is my pleasure and my honor to present you today with the Edward A. Wayne Medal. Our final award today this, uh, is the Board of Visitors Award. This is an award that recognizes the achievements of an outstanding student who represents the distinctive attributes of a VCU student. Of course, outstanding academic achievement, but also leadership and service to the university and to the community at large. The recipient receives a scholarship equal to one year tuition and fees, and the finalists for the Board of Visitors Award uh, t today, um, I, th I think they're actually here, were Virginia Slatum and uh, Kairiz Manizares. Uh, we're very pleased to have them here th with us this morning. This year's Board of Visitor Award goes to Sogand Karamian. Rector Luke, I will ask you if you will kindly bring Sogan forward to the podium. Provost Hackett. So again, carry me on. Your high academic achievement, impressive leadership, and compassionate service have made an indelible mark on the university and the community at large. Your accomplished scholarship and volunteer work in the field of science and healthcare have improved the well-being of patients locally and abroad and advances the global effort to make this world a better place for all. You demonstrate the very best that Virginia Commonwealth University has to offer. President Rao. So again, in recognition of your great achievements, it really is my honor by the authority invested in me by the Board of Visitors of Virginia Commonwealth University to present you with the 2017 Board of Visitors Award. And congratulations again to all of our awardees. Now we will move on to present our degree candidates. And I will ask uh, to begin with Graduate School Dean Doug Boudinot to please come forward and present candidates for the degree, Doctor of Philosophy.
Thank you, President Rao. Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy please rise? Mr. President, as Dean of the Graduate School, it gives me great pleasure to present these candidates who have filled all of the requirements and are recommended by the graduate faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of each of your faculties, I am very pleased to confer upon each one of you the degree Doctor of Philosophy. And I thank you and ask you to be seated for a moment and we'll ask School of Education Dean Andrew Dare to come forward and present candidates for the degree Doctor of Education. Thank you, President Rao. Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Education please rise? Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Education, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you the Doctor of Education degree. And now we will hood our PhD and EDD graduates. And I will ask Dean Boudinot if he will please come forward. The graduates major advisor will join me in hooding each of the graduates, the PhD and EDD graduates. The president will be joined by Rector Luke in congratulating our graduates. Doctor of Philosophy in Health-Related Sciences, Tyler Corson, accompanied by Tracy Gendron. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Health Services Organization and Research, Tina Highfill, accompanied by Dolores Clement. Doctor of Philosophy in Health-Related Sciences, Jeffrey Joy, accompanied by Amy Armstrong. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Health-Related Sciences, Arnethia Sutton, accompanied by William Corzin. Doctor of Philosophy in Health Services Organization and Research, Julia Kushalani, accompanied by Jan Clement. Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Andrew Baker, accompanied by Sharon Zumbrun. Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Irina Kane, accompanied by Colleen Toma. Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Amy Hutton, accompanied by James McMillan. Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Christy Tyndall, accompanied by Kathleen Cawley.
Doctor of Philosophy in Biomedical Engineering, Daniel Ababayu, accompanied by Dean Barbara Boyan. Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering, Emra Benley, accompanied by Umit Ozgur. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering, Sun Young Park, accompanied by Umit Ozgar. Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering, Jing Yang Lu, accompanied by Umit Ozgar. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering, William Clavijo Bejesus, accompanied by Gary Atkinson. Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering, Saeed Hamed Alias, accompanied by Jifeng Wang. Wait, wait, wait. Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering, Muslim Demir, accompanied by Ram Gupta. Doctor of Philosophy in Chemistry, Kayesh Ashraf, accompanied by Marianne Collinson. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Chemistry, Wirain Duwalkar, accompanied by Marianne Collinson. Doctor of Philosophy in Chemistry, Stacy Stiegel, accompanied by Marianne Collinson. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Chemistry, Lamia Nahar, accompanied by Indika Arachigi. Doctor of Philosophy in Chemistry, Sarah Smith, accompanied by Everett Carpenter. Doctor of Philosophy in Nanoscience and Nanotechnology, Brent Williams, accompanied by Everett Carpenter. Doctor of Philosophy in Chemistry, Sumra Tusuma, accompanied by Hani El Kadre. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering, Yomna Abdelmudi, accompanied by Hani El Kadari. Doctor of Philosophy in Clinical Psychology, Nadia Islam, accompanied by Wendy Cleaver. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Media, Art, and Text, Gareth Blackwell, accompanied by Eric Garberson. Doctor of Philosophy in Media, Art, and Text, Charity Fowler, accompanied by Eric Garberson. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Media, Art, and Text, Ivy Roberts, accompanied by Eric Garberson. Doctor of Philosophy in Media, Art, and Text, Tamara Watkins, accompanied by Richard Fine.
Doctor of Philosophy in Nanoscience and Nanotechnology, Nala Abu Rakti, accompanied by Michael Rishikoff. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Integrative Life Sciences, Neha Sakuwalker, accompanied by Peter Yutz. Doctor of Philosophy in, in Biochemistry, Amrita Soule, accompanied by Christopher Valerie. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Epidemiology, Natalie Baris, accompanied by Brianna Mezout. Doctor of Philosophy in Epidemiology, Michael Saadi, accompanied by Elizabeth Prom Warmly. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Human Genetics, Majid Akiel, accompanied by Devanand Sarkar. Doctor of Philosophy in Human Genetics, Enteng Shon, accompanied by Rita Xiang. Doctor of Philosophy in Human Genetics, Timothy Kegelman, accompanied by Ross Mickelson. Doctor of Philosophy in Human Genetics, Bridget Quinn, accompanied by Ross Mickelson. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Human Genetics, Kimberly Mays, accompanied by Joseph Landry. Doctor of Philosophy in Human Genetics, Kelly Rafferty, accompanied by Colleen Jackson Cook. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Human Genetics, Marin Smith, accompanied by Michael Miles. Doctor of Philosophy in Microbiology and Immunology, Sean Evans, accompanied by Jason Carline. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Neuroscience, Tusin Chow, accompanied by Ian Scott Ramsey. Doctor of Philosophy in Neuroscience, Melissa Powell, accompanied by Linda Phillips. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmacology and Toxicology, Rachel Inga, accompanied by Patrick Beardsley. Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmacology and Toxicology, Asti Jackson, accompanied by Imad Damaj. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmacology and Toxicology, Joanna Jacob, accompanied by William Dewey.
Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmacology and Toxicology, Julie Suyama, accompanied by William Dewey. Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmacology and Toxicology, Alexandra St Stafford, accompanied by Darlene Brunzel. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Physiology, Ivana Ruhawa, accompanied by Jose Miguel Atet. Doctor of Philosophy in Physiology and Biophysics, Michael Davis, accompanied by Bruce Rubin. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmaceutical Sciences, Mandana Izimi, accompanied by Michael Hindle. Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmaceutical Sciences, Sneha Dapare, accompanied by Masahiro Sakagami. Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmaceutical Sciences, Brianna Mackey, accompanied by Douglas Sweet. Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmaceutical Sciences, He Bing Lu, accompanied by Douglas Sweet. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmaceutical Sciences, Niha Mahuro, accompanied by Philip Girk. Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmaceutical Sciences, Samuel Obeng, accompanied by Philip Girk. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmaceutical Sciences, Yoshida Palawal, accompanied by Patricia Slatum. Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmaceutical Sciences, Julie Patterson, accompanied by David Holdford. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmaceutical Sciences, Anne Shaw, accompanied by David Holdford. Doctor of Philosophy in Clinical and Translational Sciences, Lauren Fulgosa Cooley, accompanied by Daniel Conrad. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Clinical and Translational Sciences, Elizabeth Doe, accompanied by Hermine Mays. Doctor of Philosophy in Clinical and Translational Sciences, Arden Moscati, accompanied by Suvulalin Bakkanu. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy in Public Policy and Administration, Stephen Keener, accompanied by William Pelfrey. Doctor of Education in Leadership, Annette Bennett, accompanied by Barbara Driver.
Doctor of Education in Leadership, Martha Powers, accompanied by Barbara Driver. <laughs> Doctor of Education in Leadership, Cheryl Service, accompanied by Barbara Driver. Doctor of Education in Leadership, Stephanie Watts, accompanied by Barbara Driver. Doctor of Education in Leadership, Brenda Conway, accompanied by Thomas Beatty. Doctor of Education in Leadership, Angela Bagley Dickens, accompanied by Thomas Beatty. Doctor of Education in Leadership, Alfred Anderson Van II, accompanied by Thomas Beatty. Doctor of Education in Leadership, Stephanie Fellinger, accompanied by Katherine Mansfield. <laughs> Doctor of Education in Leadership, Rebecca Hawthorne, accompanied by Katherine Mansfield. Doctor of Education in Leadership, Margaret Meg Pasquale Foley, accompanied by Katherine Mansfield. Doctor of Education in Leadership, Andrea Mananen, accompanied by Katherine Mansfield. Doctor of Education in Leadership, Pamela Venable, accompanied by Katherine Mansfield. Doctor of Education in Leadership, Michael Flanagan, accompanied by Jamie Arkin. Doctor of Education in Leadership, Janine Grabham, accompanied by Jamie Arkin. Doctor of Education in Leadership, Sheila Smith, accompanied by Jamie Arkin. Doctor of Education in Leadership, Laura Marshall, accompanied by Brenda Kalbach. Doctor of Education in Leadership, Paula McMahon, accompanied by Brenda Kalbach. Doctor of Education in Leadership, Belinda Merriman, accompanied by Brenda Kalbeck. Doctor of Education in Leadership, Deanna Moreau, accompanied by Brenda Kalbeck.
Doctor of Education in Leadership, Deborah Romig, accompanied by Brenda Kalbeck. Once again, congratulations to all of our PhD and EDD graduates. And now I will ask Dean Boudno to please come forward and present candidates for their master's degrees and post baccalaureate certificates in all disciplines. Will the master's degree candidates for all majors please stand as I call your school? The College of Humanities and Sciences. School of Allied Health Professions, School of the Arts, please remain standing, School of Business, School of Dentistry, <laughs> School of Education, Master's Degree Candidates in the School of Engineering, Master's Degree Candidates in the L. Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs. Master's Candidates in the School of Medicine. Master's Candidates in the School of Nursing. Master's Candidates in the School of Pharmacy. In the School of Social Work. Master's candidates in VCU Life Sciences, VCU Da Vinci Center, VCU Office of Research, and all other masters. Will the candidates for post-baccalaureate certificates in all disciplines please rise? Mr. President, as Dean of the Graduate School, it gives me great pleasure to present these candidates who have fulfilled all of the requirements and are recommended by the graduate faculty at VCU. I want to be sure that all master's degree candidates and post-baccalaureate certificate earners are standing. And with that, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of each of your faculties, I am pleased to confer upon each of you your master's degrees and certificates. And I thank you. Please be seated. At this time, I'll ask School of Allied Health Professions Dean Cecil Drain to come forward and present candidates for the degree Doctor of Nurse Anesthesia Practice. Thank you, President Rao. For the last 12 years, our program in nurse anesthesia has been ranked number one in the country by US News and World Report. So it's great pleasure that I ask the candidates for the degree Doctorate of Nurse Anesthesia Practice to please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Allied Health Professions, it gives me great pleasure to present these STEM-educated students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the world-class faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested me by the Commonwealth of Virginia and the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your degree, Doctor of Nurse Anesthesia Practice. And Dean Drain, will you please also present candidates for the degree, Doctor of Physical Therapy? Thank you. Our physical therapy program is also ranked at top 20 by U.S. News and World Report, and it gives me great pleasure to ask the candidates for the degree Doctorate of Physical Therapy to please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Allied Health Professions, it gives me great pleasure to present these STEM 
educated students to who fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by their world-class faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia and the Board of Visitors upon the recommendation of your faculty, it is my pleasure to confer upon each one of you the degree Doctor of Physical Therapy. And at this time, I will ask School of Dentistry Dean Dave Surrett to please come forward and present candidates for the degree Doctor of Dental Surgery. Thank you. Will the candidates for the degree Doctor of Dental Surgery please rise? Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Dentistry, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of your faculty, it gives me great pleasure to confer upon each one of you the degree Doctor of Dental Surgery. Thank you. At this time, I will ask School of Medicine Dean Peter Buckley to please come forward and present candidates for the degree Doctor of Medicine. Thank you, Dr. Rao. Would the candidates for Doctor of Medicine please stand and make a lot of noise? <laughs> President Rao, as a School of Medicine Dean, it's an immense pleasure to present these colleagues who have completed all of their requirements and are recommended by the School of Medicine faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of the medicine faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you the degree Doctor of Medicine. Thank you. At this time, I will ask School of Pharmacy Dean Joe DePiro to please come forward and present candidates for the degree Doctor of Pharmacy. Thank you, Mr. President. Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Pharmacy please rise? Wow. President Rao. As Dean of the School of Pharmacy, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of the pharmacy faculty, I am very pleased to confer upon each one of you the degree Doctor of Pharmacy. Thank you. At this time, I will ask VCU Honors College Dean Barry Falk to please come forward and acknowledge students who will graduate today with Latin and University Honors. Thank you, President Rao. In accordance with university tradition, those bachelor degree holders who have done exceptionally well academically and have completed a minimum of 45 credits at VCU are recognized with Latin honors. All students with a grade point average between 3.3 and 3.59 on a scale of 4.0 are graduating cum laude, which means graduation with academic distinction. Will these students please rise? Thank you. Please be seated. All students with a grade point average between 
3.6 and 3.89 are graduating magna cum laude, which signifies graduation with high academic distinction. Will these students please rise? Thank you. All students graduating with a grade point average of 3.9 or higher are graduating summa cum laude, which signifies graduation with the highest academic distinction. Will these students please rise? Thank you and congratulations to you all. I would also like to recognize the 150 bachelor's degree candidates who, in addition to earning Latin honors, have completed the rigorous requirements of VCU's Honors College and will graduate today with university honors. Would you please rise? Congratulations on your exceptional achievement. And at this time, we will now move forward and award baccalaureate degrees and certificate and certificates. And for that, I will ask the College of Humanities and Sciences Dean, Monsi Fuentes, to please come forward to the podium. Thank you, President Rao. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees and baccalaureate certificates in the College of Humanities and Sciences please rise? The view from here is just, is just wonderful. Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Humanities and Sciences, it gives me great pleasure to present these outstanding students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by our faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of each of your faculties, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees and certificates. Thank you. And now I'll ask School of Allied Health Professions Dean Cecil Drain to return again to the podium for a presentation of candidates. Will the candidates for a bachelor's degree in the School of Allied Health Professions please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Allied Health Professions, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by their outstanding faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees. And at this time, I will ask School of Arts Interim Dean James Frazier to please come forward to the podium. Thank you, President Rao. Will candidates for bachelor's degrees and uh, baccalaureate certificates in all majors in the School of the Arts please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, as interim dean of the School of the Arts, the number one public school of the arts and design in the nation, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by their excellent faculty. 
and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and with the recommendation of your faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees and certificates. And now, if School of Business Interim Dean Ken Kahn will please come forward to the podium. Dean Kahn. Thank you, Dr. Rao. Will all candidates for bachelor degrees and baccalaureate certificates in the School of Business please rise? Mr. President, as Interim Dean of the School of Business, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the business faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of the business faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees and certificates. Thank you. At this time, I will ask School of Dentistry Dean Dave Surratt to return to the podium for the presentation of baccalaureate candidates. Thank you. Will the candidates for the degree of bachelor's degree in dental hygiene from the School of Dentistry please rise? Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Dentistry, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by their faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of your faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees. Thank you. And now I will ask School of Education Dean Andrew Dare to please come forward. Thank you, President Rao. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees in the School of Education please rise? I think there is one. <laughs> Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Education, it gives me great pleasure to present this student who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And for those students in education who are here and those who are not here, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of the excellent education faculty, I am pleased to confer upon all of you, wherever you are, your baccalaureate degrees. And at this time, I will ask Engineering School Dean Barbara Boyan to please come forward. Mr. President, Will the candidates for the bachelor's degrees and baccalaureate certificates in the very best school of engineering at VCU please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Engineering, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all the requirements and are recommended by our faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of your faculty in engineering, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees and certificates. Thank you. At this time, I'll ask L. Douglas Wilder, school dean, to please come forward, John Accardino, and present candidates for his school. Thank you, President Rao. 
Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees in the L. Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs please rise. Mr. President, as Dean of the L. Douglas Wilder School of Government and Public Affairs, it gives me great pleasure to present these outstanding students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and with the recommendation of your faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees. And at this time, I will ask School of Nursing Dean, Jean Giddens, if she will please come forward. Thank you, President Rao. Will all candidates for all bachelor's degrees in the School of Nursing please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Nursing, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by our outstanding faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of the nursing faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees. Thank you. And at this time, I now ask School of Social Work Interim Dean Tim Davey to please come forward to the podium. Thank you, President Rao. Would the candidates for all the bachelor's degrees in the School of Social Work please rise? Mr. President, as Interim Dean of the School of Social Work, it gives me great pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, upon the recommendation of the Social Work faculty, I am very pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees. And at this time, I will now ask University College Interim Dean Shelley Fowler if she will kindly come forward. Thank you, President Rao. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies in University College please rise? President Rao, as Interim Dean of University College, it gives me tremendous pleasure to present these students who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by the faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of your faculty, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies degrees. At this time, I will ask Life Sciences Vice Provost Rob Tomes to please come forward. Thank you, President Rao. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees in life sciences please rise? Mr. President, as Vice Provost for Life Sciences, it gives me incredible pleasure to prevent these, present these students. I will not prevent. Who have fulfilled all requirements and are recommended by their faculty. And by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Board of Visitors, and upon the recommendation of your faculty in Life Sciences, I am pleased to confer upon each one of you your baccalaureate degrees.
And at this time, I will ask Provost Hackett to return to the podium. Thank you, President Rao. At this time, I invite Jim Williams, VCU alumni president, to share some final remarks. Jim? Thank you, Provost Hackett. On behalf of VCU alumni and all of its constituent organizations, it's my privilege and proud honor to welcome you to this wonderful occasion. To be here today, you've received much support and encouragement from your families and your friends, but this personal educational achievement is a tribute to your hard work and your intellectual perseverance. As you graduate today and bring this chapter of your academic career to a close, we hope you'll recognize that your university and your alumni organization have provided you with a solid ground from which to grow. We also hope, as alumni, you will use your significant talents and energies to not only continue alumni stewardship for future generations, but also to expand upon it. We invite you to join over 183,000 alumni throughout the world, and with words and deeds, show the excellence and quality of your education. Be proud of your university, because we are proud of you. Our wish for each of you is that you realize your full potential and in so doing, find a method of contributing back to society and the university in such a way that is meaningful for you. We are honored to welcome you to the, into our alumni family. Congratulations, class of 2017. Thank you very much, Jim. This is actually Jim's final commencement ceremony as VCU's alumni president. He's had a remarkable tenure of service and leadership to our university. Please join me in thanking Jim for his great volunteer service to VCU. And now, it is my pleasure to officially make you VCU's newest alumni, so I want you to practice a tradition with me which is to take the tassels on your mortarboards, move them from the right side of your mortarboard to the left side of your mortarboard. Please do that now. Congratulations to VCU's class of 2017! Graduates, graduates, families, and friends, this brings our commencement ceremony to a close. We ask that you kindly allow the platform party to exit. Our marshals will then lead you in your recessional. On behalf of President Rao and the VCU Board of Visitors, we wish you all the very best. Thank you again, and congratulations. <laughs>